All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cisco Packet Tracer introduction course. Again, my name is Keith Gebhardt. So we've taken a look and really got to understand a lot about Cisco Packet Tracer, how to navigate around it, how to start dragging and dropping different network devices in to build our topologies. We created our own little network or layer two network within Packet Tracer already. We learned how to configure our devices, right? So there's a couple more things I want to show you guys. Now, the one important thing to understand with anything in networking, as far as core networking, like the complete fundamentals of networking, along with the OSI models, as we discussed before, along with collision domains, broadcast domains, is also data encapsulation. And we're going to get into that in a minute. But first, if you guys are interested in data encapsulation, this is an excellent course. I have had a lot of students take this course, a lot of great feedback. We really go into a lot of great details within this course to really help, you know, allow you to understand how our data is really communicating through our network. And we actually have some awesome visual representations for animations. We go through we go through a lot of the main protocols that you would see, et cetera, et cetera. This is a really good course for you guys to fully grasp and understand data encapsulation. If you want, if you look at your screens here, you will see there's a coupon code again. You can take this course for ten dollars US. Again, if you are outside of the United States. I do not know the conversion rate, so plug the coupon in and see what it is for yourself if you would like to take it. But data encapsulation is extremely, extremely important, and you'll see why right now. So say I wanna go ahead and ping it to this computer over here. Remember when I said a few things that's absolutely necessary, even if we're on a layer two, uh, layer, uh, layer two network, okay? Um, which is also considered a LAN, and this is typically with a local area network we're concerned with what switching. Well, we also need to be worried about IP addresses. Okay, we also need to be worried about IP subnet masks. And the reason for this, even though we are in layer two, is because of this wonderful protocol we have called ARP. Now, one thing that we need to be aware of, okay, is the IP protocol is layer three. Okay. The ARP protocol is indeed layer two. So why is that important? Well, another thing to remember is ARP maps IP addresses to uh, MAC addresses or physical addresses layer two. So MAC addresses. So all that information is extremely important. And the reason for that is because we're gonna notice, even though we're talking about a layer two network and ARP is a layer two protocol, it's gonna end up needing that IP information to figure out where a device is on this local area network. So essentially an ARP is a broadcast that's gonna go out to every single device that it does not know about. And then it's gonna, the device that answers and says, hey, yes, this is me, is gonna go ahead and send that information back and then it'll do what it's supposed to be doing, whether it's an ICMP protocol or whatever, what have you. One thing I do wanna take notice to is if we go into our desktop, go to a com or the server rather, okay? So we're at server 192.168.1.8 go into command prompt, if I do an ARP-A, which for all, just like on your computers, hit enter, no ARP entries found. So this computer, or the server rather, has no idea where any other device is on the network. And same thing with this guy, if we go in here, uh, not terminal, sorry, cut, uh, keep clicking that, command prompt, there we go, and do an ARP-A for ARP all. Again, he doesn't know where anything is on this network yet either. The reason for this is because they haven't communicated back and forth through each other yet since we've opened up this lab again. So what I want to do is send a ping all the way over to the server. So to do that, we're going to click this little stopwatch over here and go into simulation mode. This opens up the simulation panel and we're going to actually go back to this computer over here, which is the 1.5 computer. And if I go to the command prompt and simply say ping 192.168.1.8 for our server and hit enter, let's watch what happens automatically we're seeing two different packets being generated. And if we come to our event list over here, we're seeing one is indeed the ICMP protocol and one is the ARP protocol, okay? Now, what's gonna go first? Well, since we don't know where anything is in this network yet, it needs to send that ARP broadcast out. This packet's literally gonna go to this computer. It's gonna go over to the switch, go to this computer and this computer. This guy, 1.6, is just gonna say, drop this packet, it's not for me. He's going to get and say, drop this packet. It's not for me. And then this guy's going to say, you know what? This is for me, but I'm going to reply back to you so you know what my MAC address is. Now, the way we could operate the simulation panel is in a few ways. 
we can manually hit capture forward and it's going to move the packet forward one time okay to the next place it can go to and you notice arp did indeed go first or if you want you can hit auto capture and it's going to automatically go through by itself automatically okay that's what the auto <laughs> insinuates really this speed slider we could slow it down or speed it up maybe you're just starting to learn you want to slow it down so you can really see what's going on pause it and then click and see where it's at within the device or maybe it's a large topology and you're more familiar with reading this information so you would want to speed it up okay so that's just something to keep in mind so i'm going to go ahead and click auto capture here i'm going to notice this packet goes to that laptop and to the switch and now to this laptop and to the switch but notice these two laptops are dropping it but notice the server is going to say hey you know what this is for me i'm going to de-encapsulate this packet respawn the switch is now going to learn in what's called the cam table okay it's a mac address table on the switch but that's for a completely new topic just so you're aware go back here and notice it goes right back to this guy because now the switches know that the mac address for this computer exists on this port and this port etc cetera, etc cetera. once it gets that arp request and says hey i know where to send this guy now i know where he exists locally on the layer two side of our local area network i can just forward that communication protocol which is ping which is testing direct network connectivity so once this gets to the server he's going to reply back now remember that ping by default is for echo reply request messages essentially and quite frankly all a ping is in the that icmp packet is the alphabet the you know a through z that's all it is so watching this packet get back here at this point we saw the communication process we could actually just click this button again to stop it or pause it because we're not really going to want to watch this go back and forth four times. Even if you speed it up, it can take quite a, quite a bit. So going through here, we could actually click on each one of these. So if we clip, click on this ARP message here, you're seeing it's going out of the device we are at. And the source and destination, okay, well, the source is going to be me because I'm the one sending it out. The destination, obviously, it doesn't know yet. So it's going to use the broadcast layer 2 address of all Fs, the 12 Fs. The source it knows because it's programmed, we hard coded that into our network adapter on this computer. And the destination it knows because we told the command line interface on the computer, okay, that's where we need to go. That's who we're trying to communicate with. So that information is not going to change. And as we go through, we can see now we are at the switch. Okay, we're still at, we're still coming from our source um, address, which is our computer at layer three, broadcasting for our layer two ARP. And it still relies on this IP information here. That's why it's important to understand and not get that mixed up. But on your exams, both for your CompTIA Network Plus and CCNA, you need to know that ARP is indeed a Layer 2 protocol. And it uses the ICMP protocol to make this happen. Or I'm sorry, ARP is a Layer 2 protocol and PING is an ICMP protocol for direct network connectivity testing. So as we go through, you can see none of this information is changing until we get to this device. Now our Fs are pre-populated with the server's IP information. If I hover over him, oh, it's not going to work with this open. But the server's MAC address is going to be the 00010794 right here. And the reason why I know that is because it came in knowing that this was our source. So we knew that was from 1.5 broadcasting to this 1.8 computer. He's now filling in his MAC address as the source information because he's now the one sending the packet back to the 1.5 computer understand that it, the source and destination changes from who is sending and receiving that packet so now the destination ip and stuff that's still going to well that's going to change because the source is now 1.8 and the destination is 1.5 you can see here how it flips right but let's go ahead and just you know so it's going to still stay the same it's sending that information all the way through let's go to the icmp packet now since we are only concerned with layer 2 networking right we're just pinging right to him He's not so much concerned with layer three at this point. He now knows the MAC address to where that 192.168.1.8 computer resides on. Because if we go back, let's go back to our real time simulation here. Click this computer. Obviously that just completed. And if I just hit the up arrow a couple times, do an ARP all, he knows where this device is and what layer two address is associated to it. That's pretty awesome guys. So right there, you're seeing how we're able to really dissect what's going on on our networks. And it's such a really good res resourceful tool at your disposal using Cisco Packet Tracer because now we can really see what's going on with the encapsulation. 
And, you know, furthermore, it's going to really benefit you studying so you could actually understand how this data encapsulation process is working, how the ARP is working, how our pings are working, everything that you need to know. And as you can see, we could also edit and filter out what we are trying to look for. So if we have a complex network set up here, there might be a lot of different things going on in here that it'll show up in here. So you could really start diving into those and seeing what those are. And then if there's ever a point that you're not too sure what something is, maybe like RTP, STP, or TFTP, you know, those are some common ones, but what about SCCP or PAGP? Okay, this one's not too, I'm sure a lot of you aren't too familiar with that one. Well, you start seeing it populate in your simulation panel or your event list. Ooh, what is that? Let me Google it. That's how you just take what you're already learning and then build on to it. Those are, you know, some really good, helpful tips there that you could really utilize Cisco Packet Trace for to really better, better yourselves as you study. All right, guys, so that is our um, capturing packets within Cisco Packet Tracer Part 1 on our local area network, Layer 2 network. And as we move forward into getting a router and everything you know, implemented in this network, we will start taking a look at how we could do the uh, data encapsulation over through a router and see some more cool things with that through our simulation panel here, capturing packets.